Hello everyone. This is a Grumpy Old Guy Gaming, and welcome to the Server Tour 2023. Uh, just a couple disclaimers before we start here. Um, this is pre-recorded footage. The audio I had put out earlier was uh, not of the best quality, and it's been a bit of a struggle to get my voice back up to an area to re-record. So I want to say this was recorded on the 14th of October, obviously day-to-day, -day, the experience of what servers you get can vary by a bit, but this is a fair representation of what's been out there in October. This is the fourth in our series of server tours for .hack fragment. The links to the other ones will be down below. Now I am going to be recording this as I watch the playthrough in my editing software. And I do remember this was a very active day for the servers. You could see quite a list there and I was already thrilled to see that there were servers with each root town represented at least once. In fact, there are a series of servers and we're going to be visiting those first named after the root towns in-game themselves. That may not make a huge deal uh, for people who are newer to the series or whatnot, but each root town had its own fixed item list and equipment list you could buy out of the shops. So being able to just have that at your disposal, oftentimes when you're running in online mode, you can get a pretty decent range of fields from most servers. They have a level, but that's just sort of a general idea of their, you know, upper end strength. We're going to go into Mac Anu here, which is the first root town you would run into in Infection in the single player game series, and in fact the first root town you run into in the offline story mode in Fragment. It has a very basic items list and weapons list, but it has that iconic scene with the tower. You could hear the water rushing by the bridge. For a series that is basically has a fandom built on nostalgia at this point, this is one of the seminal points of that nostalgia. As you can see here, just baseline health drinks, mages, souls, antidotes in the item shop. taking a walk down to possibly my favorite part of the entire town. This little alleyway. Just a great place to sort of hang out. It's where a good deal of infection cutscenes come from. Um, I don't want to get too spoiler heavy into it, but there is one very early on in Infection's gameplay that just gets burned into your mind after a while. So that is a fun place to go to just to visit, and hey, if you're partied up with a couple other people in the server, you could always come to this area where there's usually three NPCs just chatting and available for trade. Sort of reenact that scene for old times' sakes. Now, I will do my best here as we hit each server to attempt something that I did way back in 2020 in the... yeah, way back. Uh, in the first server tour, and we're going to do our best to conjure up some Halloween keywords out of the word lists here. Taking a look at the lists. Should be pretty stock standard words here. You could see bursting, putrid, all of the words that typically come when you open the area server program. Perfectly fine in their own right, and you have dozens upon dozens of options you could go with here choosing out words, and I'm going to try not to duplicate throughout, and I come up with Putrid, Haunted, I want to say, did I go Fake Castle? Yeah, I did. Putrid, Haunted, Fake Castle, because gotta have a haunted house in Halloween, I guess. That was my logic. Um, it also came up as a light field. I know I was thinking Darkness Field uh, a couple years back when Amuse and I, uh, put together a Halloween field. I should say he put together and I just ripped off a Dickens uh, ghost story as inspiration for plot points. 
So, if you're making a Halloween-themed dungeon in your area server, as custom events are a thing you can actually do within the parameters, uh, making it something other than darkness-themed may be a nice little way to uh, hide it, hide the obvious, if you will. Moving from Macanu now to Dunloriag. Got the wispy cloud cover, you're up very high, high elevation, you could just see the tops of the mountainous structures and of course the large kites billowing in the distance. Just checking out some of the scenery here. Got the old saving spot, of course you can't save in such a manner in Fragment, you have to exit out through the menu. A lesson so many of us learned the hard way. Coming to the magic shop here again, you're talking some very basic stuff. You're into your first set of elemental scrolls. And you do have some slightly higher level weapon and armor choices. But still at the very basics as far as items and whatnot. Which you'd find in this branch here. Then a little further up, you have where the Grunty Ranch would be. Can't raise the Grunties in online mode. You have to raise those in offline, but you can use them in fields in online mode as well as offline, so there is that. No Grunty racing per se, but you could always just grab a couple buddies and make up a course on a field and just see how you do. Coming back up here, I think I took a moment to head over and just look at that area to the far left. I was told once upon a time that um, when you think of Dunloriag as it appears in the anime.hack sign, that it's really that area over there that you're sort of thinking about and not this main stretch that they used for the root town. An interesting little food for thought. Maybe true, maybe not. I have been known to uh, be sort of gullible on things, so I will generally believe if it's told in a believable fashion. As for keywords here, we are coming up with something vaguely lifeless. Think I want? Yeah, this is about as basic as you get on uh, keywords. It's even pared down from Mac Anu, and we're going to settle on vaguely lifeless mirror world. Because alternate realities and different dimensions. Very spooky stuff for some, and certainly a fitting field for a Halloween dungeon. You can see fire field there, and all kinds of fun can be had with that during the spooky season. And that was a brief look at Dunloriag. Up next, as we do the menu through lobby transition of Doom, will be Carmina Gadalica. beautiful night ambience here. You see those well-lit buildings in the background, the uh, what I like to call the shimmering metallic jello water. And a moment of true ineptitude on my part as we are going to flail around looking for the little airship that's going to hover over the waterline and serve as sort of a local cruise or maybe a ferry of some port, uh, some sort. And for the life of me, I just could not time it this run through. Didn't stop me from doing it. Wondered just about my entire way over to the Carmina Gadalica Grunty Ranch. Coming back, and you could see it there in the background. I don't think I saw it in the background live right away and was about to turn away when it just caught my periphery. Good old steam-powered airship. 
like most things in this game in this series, it has its own charm, even if the function of it doesn't seem that apparent outright. You would think the kites, like the stuff we saw out in Dunloriag, would help support it. But there's got to be some sort of air pressure pushing them straight up in the air like that. Moving on down the street into our shopping district. That's one thing I liked about Carmina Gadalica. It was a straightforward design, but one you could follow. Now we're moving into our tier two healing items. Got a healing potion. Also have some more variety in our weapons and armor, including some rare weapons, albeit low level ones. So anyone looking to do a Natsume cosplay character can pick up their Spiral Edge here in Carmina Gadalica. And thanks to the weapons not being capped high or low, you could actually do it at a level where it's useful. You could also pick up the Kotetsu Sword there, so a couple rares to be picked up. Moving through the level 30s for armor level here. Coming back down and checking out the keywords, once again it will be a list of standard keywords. Not sure what we're going with here. I do believe I skip chronicling, um, though that would be a fun thing to do with a theme. Try and trick people into reading the messages on a timed dungeon. Get Bursting Vindictive Melody. Maybe like the kind of song that gets stuck in your head and just starts creeping you out over time. Once again, a fire field. This one all the way up to level 12. Probably not all the way if you're hitting Carmina Gadalica, but again, you could very well play here in your first five levels. Which point I would suggest not running that unless you're grouped up with someone who could help. But that is a look at Carmina Gadalica, and just like that, we are three servers through our tour. The Aerial City Fort Oof will be next, once again up in the clouds. And we are greeted by the majestic sight of the town in its uncorrupted glory. Cannons pointing out over the walls in all directions. As this in the game within the game in its lore was the site of some major battles. Running towards the Grunty Ranch here, this is a very sprawling layout. Probably the first place, if you're not thinking about it, you could run in the wrong direction and get a little bit turned around here. Most of the other towns are at least fairly linear and laid out. This is... and it's not an overly complex design, it's just essentially a stretched out star. With your main points of interest at the ends and your gate in the middle. But... There is a lot of uh, room to cover in between with those large spanning bridges. Even more powerful curative items here. You get to see recovery drinks and artisan souls and that sort of lot. So when you're advancing and level and you're finding that mage's souls aren't quite cutting it, looking for a place like this may be to your liking. Standard keywords list again. So we are going to go with Obedient Snaring Aquafield. Not sure why I went with Obedient Snaring Aquafield. Maybe it's a sentient Aquafield I think I went with. Maybe it was some sort of possessed forest that I was thinking at the time that doesn't let people escape. I'm hoping that's what I was going for because that doesn't sound half bad as I'm saying it now. Level 13 Woodfield. But that will do it on, albeit a quick run, 
One thing otherwise to note, uh, this is a fantastic area for selfies. Like, if you're looking for that screen cap of your character just to sort of show it off, um, the atmosphere here is just wonderful. Also going to take a quick look at the weapons and stuff because I wasn't sure at the time of recording if I would run into Fort Oof again. Um, it's not usually one of the more popular areas because it's high level but not the highest level as far as gear goes, and with no level cap on gear, no locked into a certain gear range, usually the logic is if you can get the best stuff, you get the best stuff. But that will do it for this look through Fort Oof, and we are moving on to Leah File next. Loading up the Relic City Leofail, only we're not. We're loading up Net Slum. The explanation for that, again, is an in game spoiler, so cover your ears for a moment. But it was sort of hard injected in. Could actually see that very event taking place on one of the liminality discs that came with the IMOQ series. Running around here, we are back to once again a very compact, condensed area. Fun place to run figure eights, and this is a very popular root town uh, for area servers because, again, you can get high level things full on looking at summon spells in the scrolls. Got your top end healing items, your healing elixirs and emperor souls, the things that get you from one to full in the click of a button combination. Also, you've got your top end starter gear, as it were. The things you could just outright purchase from town. Takes a fair bit of gold, certainly, but you're looking at level 50s in the weapons and level 70 in the armor. Certainly not going to be able to use these skills attached to them, but if you could pick those up at like level 5, you're talking about having physical stats well beyond your normal capabilities. Moving to the gate now. And we are once again looking at the basic words, this being a slightly expanded list, so maybe a few added in. Definitely a few added in, but they look like words you would expect to see in a dot .hack game for the keyword selection. As we have more variety, I'll look for something a bit more on theme. So we're going to go with Buried Silent Remnant, which you could take several ways. Either a person whose body is missing a piece, or perhaps an artifact, some type of cursed weaponry that was buried for a reason, or maybe the key to salvation if only someone had the courage to find it. A quick thanks to the folks who put up these area servers just to give us the feel of the classic root towns in their base unadulterated forms as it were. Always a nice touch. From here we will move on to the next step. And it's going to be some returning favorites. As you can see, Bearcat server actually has someone playing at the time of recording. Uh, so instead of going top down, we're probably going to start at the bottom of the list and work up, if I could recall. Again, haven't rewatched this since the day I was trying to put it together. I had intended for this to be out mid month, and as has been the case for 2023, uh, things happened. So my apologies on that, but we will get it out for October, come one way or another. Just kind of hanging out in the menu at this point. 
Okay, now we're finally moving. Onto an area server that I've seen up quite a bit, though I personally haven't been to it too often. The Terrace of the Moon server, Linares Terrace. Picked a wonderful spot for this name in Dunloriag. Though it is a shame at this moment that you can't toggle a day-night cycle to truly make this the Terrace of the Moon. Definitely does feel like a great place for some nighttime stargazing, though. I'm once again walking through the town. No real need to dive into the item list too heavily. I think in the original recording this is where I talked about the um, grunty farming. Also a nice spot here for a quick screenshot if you would. Get that nice sun ray over the top, just sort of zoom in, get the angle right. Maybe look out into the distance to seem sort of thought provoking and put that halo of light around the weapon. Okay, switch the map back on, which I did by pressing the L1 and R1 buttons simultaneously. I actually had that question come up on a previous video in the comments. Little quirks like that that don't quite work like IMOQ. But we'll make our way over and take a look at the keywords list. We are going to move into some custom words here. Well, no, these look pretty standard at the moment anyway. There is blessed though, which is not one of the typical uh, dot hack words, so we'll take blessed. Passionate. And moonlight. Because not everything spooky has to be terribly scary. And this is Lunara's Terrace. So Blessed Passionate Moonlight seems to be the perfect place uh, for the Terrace of the Moon server. Turns out to be a level 17 water field, so it's going to be a bit of a chilly adventure as water fields are usually covered in snow or ice. But that could give it a fun sort of eerie moon feeling as well. Just barren, desolate area. That is a look at Lunara's Terrace. Up next on the list is an absolute classic. We are going to Shining Darkness. You can see the actual web address uh, that Amuse put together for the area server information up in the message. So if you want to know a little more about this stalwart, possibly the most uh, curated server in Fragment, go ahead and freeze frame the uh, video and get the address there in the message. Once again, back in that slum, so you're talking high level weapons and armor. Want to take a moment here and uh, throw out a little trivia question. Um, this one is going to be a bit more of an abstract, just take a guess, and I will reveal the answer at the end. Uh, but Absolute Legend in the community, Venus, uh, had pointed out um, a very specific number that kind of blew me away. Um, there are a ton of keywords to Shining Darkness. Last year I read down the entire list, and I don't think I have the lung capacity to try it again right now. But it does offer a unique volume of potential unique areas. I know I said unique twice there, I apologize. But if you want, just take a guess as to how many unique areas can be generated with the keywords lists here in Shining Darkness. We'll reveal the number at the end of the video, so if you want, just skip ahead or maybe hang out and check out the rest of the server tour and be pleasantly surprised when I drop that knowledge on you. Taking a look at this, again, expansive keyword list. 
there are area servers that do not have near as many words total as the A list here. I want to say at one point, Amuse was planning on maxing out the keywords lists. Don't know if that is still on the docket. But you could see just about anything. And today we're feeling, again, that not everything has to be super scary about Halloween. So we're looking at silly, we're looking at spoopy, and we're looking at a pyramid. Which seems to be a fairly straightforward thought, but again, you're running dungeons in Fragment. And running down a pyramid seems to be a rather silly thing in the first place. The poor pyramid would have to be inverted. So there is your Halloween-ish keyword. Of course, it would be cheating to pick a Halloween keyword, as we did have a Halloween-themed adventure planned out here. I will put the link to the teaser video for that in the description, as well as the other server tours. So if you want to check that out, you can as well. But again, so many, many words. And the answer will be at the end of the video here, so. But for now, I think we will be backing out of Shining Darkness and moving on to our next server. All right, well, I'm not sure what final edits I will do, but I think it's safe to say you've reached the 20 minute mark of this video if you've made it to this point. So congrats to you and thank you. We are going to hit an, another absolute legend as far as area servers go, the crab server, the granddaddy of them all. This goes back to Crab General, an avid dot hack fan, uh, host of the Brambling fan site who was playing this game back when it was a live service. Weird to think about at this point. Um, but Crab and his team just sort of put together this incredible dungeon basically by figuring out how the program worked and uh, just trial and error making farming dungeons where you could get different rares as the statue drop. Not even going to attempt a keyword out of this, so we'll just random word and there you go. I don't know Japanese and I'm not going to pretend to try. There are keyword lists out here for farmable dungeons, or if you want to check out the NetSlum Discord community and ask around, uh, there are plenty of helpful people who might be able to steer you in the right direction if you're looking for a particular rare or whatnot. Also, there are a few dungeons on here for guild seals. That tends to be a rather frequent request when people get into the game. I want to say there's a level 51 wood field that I've had the most success farming the seal out of. I want to say I've pulled it from there eight or nine times. Aside from that, there isn't really much I could say about the crab server, aside from the fact that it has been around as long as anything else in the game, really, and um, hosted by Overmaster right now, who has a lovely status page also in the message here. So if you wanted to check that out, Overmaster's had the server for a couple years now. And that will do it for our look at Crab Server. Okay, moving back to a Carmina Gadalica server after our Net Slum double feature there. Going to V's place, hosted by Venus, who I mentioned briefly uh, during the Shining Darkness peak. Um, V hosts two servers here, and I believe we're going to catch them back to back. V's place was, I want to say, the first server that I know of 
that was designed to generate fields from levels 2 to 98, which I believe are the normal parameters for field generation. So literally, no matter what level you are, you could find something to your strength here. Though I must make a confession as we pull up the keywords, the words at the bottom of the list, these level 40, 50, 60, so on and so forth, the pointers are slightly off as the server leveled, in no small part to the fact that I was sort of using this place to uh, level up my Blade Master in those tenuous middle levels, and it was tough to sort of find places that worked, so I just sort of ran the same dungeon eight or nine times in a row. As for your keywords, we're going to go with Sleepy Agonizing Sea of Sand. Just an endless desert, a very dreary site, and again, a very low level field for a server in its upper 50s. Uh, this is a level 6 fire field. Nice place for lower level adventurers. Or even if you just want to hop on and run something quick, that's certainly the kind of place you could just speed run and blitz through. Once again, take a look at this beautiful night sky in Carmina Gadalica. And now moving back into the light of day in Dunloriag, we are back to the Mackerel server, the second part of our uh, hosted by Venus double feature. This one also has a rather unique custom word list, as it was formed by a couple members of the community at the time, um, with all fish-themed keywords. Shout out to Spooky on this one. I know this was one of his favorite fragment memories. Um, as you could see here, we've got a whole ton of words, and rather than go with anything too Halloween-y here, as a neat little trick, I'm going to give you a treat. Just going to throw out some keywords. It's probably all of my favorite things about this server rolled into one. It's Golden Holy Whale Shark. If you've been around long enough, you know of this, or you know of someone who's run it. And if not, hi, I'm a grumpy old guy. This is some gaming I've done. I will warn you ahead of time to set some time aside when you go to run this and bring some friends. As you can see, it's a level 73 fire field. You're going to need some levels, but the payoff's going to be worth it. I promise you that. Definitely more treat than trick on this one. Now we're going to take a quick jump back to Carmina Gadalica for the Bearcat server as it's available. Uh, I'm sure it came available a little before that, but I wanted to hop in uh, when I wasn't bothering anyone. Always good to see people out and playing. But I just wanted to take a moment and get in while it was empty, take a look around. This, of course, hosted by Samantha. Um, probably the rock of the player base right now. Always seems to be on net slum, looking to get into voice chat or help newer players out, and a very cool person in general. So just want to thank Sam, and uh, once again take a poke around Carmina Gadalica, find that airship again, because I just got to look for it. That's sort of a me thing. You may also notice, looking back through my thumbnails, that this long arm walking through various parts of these walkways has probably been one of my more common decisions because I just like the lighting here. I want to say at one point the .hack network area server was running Carmina Gadalica. And I think I came across the New Year's Eve event here. That may have been the time I soloed it with my wave master. But that is a story for another day. We are here to do the server tour today, and on Bearcat server, we stand. So let's check out the Chaos Gate, take a look at the keywords. Starting off with some old classics, and then moving on to Thick with Multiple Cs. Definitely not a dot hack thing. 
from the early to mid 2000s. So we know we have some variety of choices here and shadowy seems like a good start to a keyword set. Brutal, certainly an option, but we're going to pass over that. Don't know if we pass over, passed over. I think the door might have opened at that point. Got some cooking keywords there. Kind of fits well with mackerel and whatnot. Go with shadowy, fuzzy. Okay, shadowy, fuzzy blades might have been fun. And there's mackerel. I even forgot that part was there, but I probably geeked out a little bit over that as well. Got shrimp, grunty, meow. Shadowy, fuzzy, meow. Black cat. That's as classic Halloween as you get. Level 32 darkness field. Might be a fun time. 30s are where the monsters start to really stick out on you. Really start getting those pain in the neck ones in. That make the initial playthrough aggravating, but the after story so, so enjoyable. Seems we are coming to the end of a rather comprehensive server tour. Um, amazing how many servers were up on this day, and I do hope that tends to be more of the trend. I know we sort of go through these high tide and low tide moments, but when you see all of these varieties out there, you just get the compulsion to want to dive in and run a dungeon for old time's sake. Gonna finish up with Amber's server, the Feline Fort. I do believe Sam was hosting this for Amber for a little bit. Don't know what the situation is now, but I know Amber was the designer. Um, want to take a moment to thank everybody who hosts an area server. Um, certainly does take up resources, takes time. The program could be a little wonky. I might have murdered a computer mouse off of a right-click glitch that was going on uh, back in the day when I had my Malston server up. But the area servers adding to the online mode as well as the lobby server and all of the unique efforts that have to be taken to keep this game available and runnable for people. It just creates a whole different level to this experience, so this is my quick thank you to everyone at large, and specifically in this instance the hosts of the area servers, because again this is my fourth year doing this tour video, which was originally just a thing for me to do that wasn't another dungeon run, and has quickly turned into one of my favorite annual traditions. Sappy sentiment out of the way, let's go ahead and hit the area words and wow, did they outdo themselves on this. We've got a list of colors here and I love that they took the time to grab keywords in all caps and let you know how they're organized. Colors and physique, of course, are choosable words as well as extras, which is a great place to put chronicling. Um, the word you're kind of stuck with. There is a way to delete it, but it's far beyond my technical means and it involves doing things beyond the normal parameters of the area server as I understand. So 99% of all area servers you see will have chronicling available because those are the speed dungeons with the Z statues. It is a unique type of gameplay. But I do love that they took the time to organize these, and I do love the fact that the organizational labels are in fact selectable keywords themselves. Emus did a couple of line breaks, both single dash and double dash lines in Shining Darkness in a similar vein. But here in Feline Fort, I do want to point out that it is kind of cool that you have all of these things sort of labeled differently. 
Sorry, I had to step away and cough there for a second. As for keywords, we seem to be coming up with scarred, feral. Now just need to decide on a C word. I think I, yeah, Scarred Feral Pride is where we wound up here. Just a group of really bad cats on the prowl. Level 6 water field, so they're probably a little chilly, and not gonna lie, running across lions or lionesses on the hunt in the middle of a snow packed area probably freak me out a bit. I mean, let's be honest, running into lions just about anywhere in the open is going to freak me out a bit. But that's going to do it for our look at Feline Fort, and that's going to do it for the 2023 area server tour. Uh, this has been a grumpy old guy, and I thank you once again for checking this out. Again, apologize on the delay and the audio issues. I do hope that the end result has been an enjoyable watch, and as I am a disembodied grumpy voice of my word, the answer to that trivia question, how many unique areas can be generated by the keywords list in Shining Darkness, will be coming up presently. You all take care, and we'll see you around.